Hey everyone, so it looks like you've been looking into some Spanish resources for managing asthma. Oh, wow. Which is amazing. Yeah. And we're going to dive right into controller asthma today. Okay. And see what we can find. Yeah. It's uh, it's interesting. This okay. guide goes beyond just medication. Right. It really emphasizes taking control and, you know, living your life to the fullest, not just yeah. managing the symptoms. Not letting it dictate what you can and can't do, right? Exactly. Yeah. And they delve into the two main types of medication, bronchodilators and anti-inflammatories. Okay. Um, think of bronchodilators as your rescue inhaler. Mm. They quickly open up the airways for easier breathing. When you need it most? Yes. Your firefighters putting out the flames, so to speak. Okay. Anti-inflammatories, on the other hand, are your long-term allies. I like that. Working behind the scenes to reduce inflammation and prevent those flare-ups from happening in the first place. This is more like fire prevention. Precisely. Well. And it's important to work with your doctor to find the right balance and approach for you. Because everybody is different. Absolutely. What yeah. works for one might not work for another. Absolutely. And that's where this guide's concept of asthma zones comes in. Okay. Have you ever heard of those? I have. Okay but I'd love to hear more about how the guide yeah. talks about it. It's a great way to understand where you are with your asthma. Mm. They lay out three zones, green, yellow, and red. Okay. Green is the goal, obviously. Breathing easy, no limitations. Exactly. Yeah. You're feeling good. Your peak flow, which measures how quickly you can exhale, is in a healthy range. Okay. And you're able to go about your day-to-day -day activities without any issues. So green means keep doing what you're doing right now the yellow zone that's where things get interesting okay think of it like your phone battery dipping below 20 percent uh-huh you're not out of power yet but it's time to recharge a little warning sign exactly you might not have any noticeable symptoms yet but your lung function might be starting to decrease okay you might experience some mild wheezing or tightness in your chest you know it's funny you mentioned that huh i can remember a time when i completely brushed off being in the yellow zone thinking it was just a cough. Right. I learned my lesson the hard way. Let me tell you. We've all been there. It's easy to underestimate those early warning signs. Oh, yeah. But remember, your lungs aren't shy about letting you know when something's up. That's true. So tell me what happened. Oh, well, let's just say I ended up wishing I had paid closer attention and taken action sooner. Mm. Yeah. It's amazing how easy it is to downplay those early warning signs, thinking... Oh, it's no big deal. Right. And that's exactly what this guide emphasizes, mm. recognizing and respecting those subtle changes. Like, if you're frequently going back and forth between green and yellow, yeah. it's a sign to talk to your doctor. Your medication might need adjusting. Better safe than sorry. Exactly. Now, the red zone, yeah. that's where things get serious. Okay. It is in the red zone. Right. Um, you might be experiencing severe shortness of breath, mm -hmm. being unable to do your normal activities. Okay needing to use your chest muscles to breathe, yeah, persistent wheezing, right. or even finding that your rescue inhaler isn't providing relief. Those are some serious red flags, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. This is not the time to tough it out. Okay. The guide makes it clear, if you experience any of these symptoms, it's crucial to take your medication as prescribed mm -hmm. and get in touch with your doctor immediately. Okay. And if things aren't improving? If your breathing doesn't get significantly better after taking your medication, right, or your peak flow remains dangerously low, okay, don't hesitate to call emergency services. Your health is the priority. Absolutely. So it sounds like tracking your peak flow is pretty important yeah. to know. It can be a valuable tool. Yeah. The guide actually suggests keeping a symptom diary, noting any shortness of breath, chest tightness, coughing, or wheezing you experience. So we're like asthma detectives now. Yeah. Keeping track of all the clues. It's about connecting the dots for sure. Right. What else should we be logging in this diary? It even mentions noting if you're waking up at night or getting tired easily during exercise. Oh, wow. Yeah, those can be sneaky signs that something's off. Oh, I wouldn't have thought of that. Yeah, they can be easy to overlook. Okay. Um, if your doctor recommends using a peak flow meter, definitely jot down those readings too. Okay. The more information, the better, right? Right. Think of it like taking your asthma's temperature twice a day, right? morning and evening. It gives you and your doctor a good indication of how well you're managing it. Okay. And if you do experience an asthma attack, hmm. make a note of what might have triggered it, okay. the symptoms you experienced, yeah. and what medication helped. So gathering all this information is great, but it seems like having that open line of communication with your doctor is also crucial. 
Absolutely. This guide stresses that it's not about self-diagnosing right. or replacing the expertise of a healthcare professional. It's about being informed and empowered to have a more productive dialogue. Be an active participant in your own health, basically. Exactly. Yeah. Speaking of being proactive, yeah. let's talk about how to have those effective conversations with your doctor about managing your asthma. What are some things you should discuss? Well, a guide points out two main areas. Okay. Crisis management and long-term control. Okay. So it's like being prepared for those uh, oh, moments when symptoms flare up, but also having a strategy for preventing them in the first place, right? Exactly. You need both the fire extinguisher and the fire safety plan for your lungs. I like that analogy. Yeah. So for crisis management, we're talking about what to do during a full-blown asthma attack. Precisely what medications to take when to call for help. Okay. Your doctor can help you put together a clear plan so you don't have to think straight in the heat of the moment. Which can be really hard mm -hmm. when you're in that situation. Mm, exactly. And just knowing you have a plan takes away so much of the uncertainty and fear. Absolutely. Yeah. Now with long-term control, we're talking about those anti-inflammatory medications we discussed earlier. Okay. Remember, they're working every day to keep that inflammation down and reduce those scary flare-ups. So finding the right medication and dosage that works for you. Right. And honest communication with your doctor is key here. Mm -hmm. Are you having any side effects? Yeah. Affordability issues, even if you're struggling to use your inhaler correctly? Mm -hmm. Don't keep it to yourself. No, it's your health. Yeah. You deserve to be in control. Couldn't agree more. Knowledge is power. Yes. Understanding asthma management and taking charge of your health is yeah. huge. It can really make a difference. Yeah. So much of this just comes down to having a plan being aware of those asthma zones and that open communication with your doctor. Absolutely. Don't be afraid to ask questions. The more you understand about your asthma, the better equipped you'll be to manage it. Yeah, your doctor is your ally in this. Exactly. They're there to support you every step of the way. I like that. Now, before we wrap up, this guide focuses mainly on medication. Yeah. But it got me thinking, what are some lifestyle changes that could maybe help someone manage their asthma? Mm -hmm. I feels like a whole other deep dive. It is. There's always more to explore. That's the beauty of it, isn't it? Yeah. Always learning. Always growing. We'll leave you to ponder that for now until next time. Take care and keep exploring those fascinating quarters of knowledge.